Turn that on the radio. No comment, huh? <laughs> we'll call the meeting to order. Planning and zoning, May 5th, 2016, 10.15 p.m. Amanda, would you call the roll, please? Dicknot? Here. Curtis? Here. Hersley? Here. Are there any public comments? Hearing none, we will move on to the planning and zoning office report. Bob? Okay. Um, we had uh, nine uh, permits for uh, April. Uh, if you look at your building permit list, uh, two of them were uh, new homes that were put, being put on parcels that were rezoned recently. So that's, they're moving quickly with that, so that's good. Um, receipts are um, a little bit up for fiscal 17 over 16. We can, made a big push here. It's some pretty good size. The, the homes are pretty good size value homes, so that helps. Um, 21 building inspections for the month of April. Um, your claims list is there. Um, so it's just moving forward, getting all our uh, kennel licenses and campground license, mobile home park licenses renewed in the last couple of months. So just moving forward with that. And then the only thing left I have is the rezoning. And there, won't, not, there is not a zoning board of appeals in uh, May, so there will not be a rezoning next month So of any kind. So uh, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Now we will move on to the application of Donovan Farmers Co-op Elevator Incorporated to rezone a tract of land two acres from A1 District to B1 Business. And uh, right here, Bob disappeared. But <laughs> so since Bob's not here to comment, go ahead and explain what you want to do. Okay. Good morning. Um, what we're looking at doing is for the Don Farmers Co-op is at our Cooper location, we call it, it's actually Beaverville address. There's a um, um, older office structure that's in bad disarray and, and, and needs to be uh, RAS and, and a scale also that needs replaced. And in a current construction aspect of where that scale and office is located, it, um, it blocks some of the dump pits. and, and semis have trouble getting on and off of it. So back in 2001, I believe, the co-op purchased a half an acre um, north of the, the elevator there. And that's where the turnaround actually is now. The trucks go into that turnaround and, and come on to the scales. So our thoughts would be to purchase another acre and a half uh, of land from the farmer there and expand that existing uh, area into a new office of the Okay. <clears throat> Any questions from the committee members? Just from general information, there was nobody. Um, there is already, a, I have a purchase agreement tentatively signed between the farmer and the elevator for that acre and a half. The reason for that is the two acres meets the minimum requirement to go B1. Um, I have the soil report from Soil and Water. Um, and then the lesser report that I calculated out, and I came up with a whole total points of 161, which makes it in the medium impact to agriculture. If anybody wants to look at those, there they are. I just need them back when you're done. Nobody voiced any concerns one way or the other. It's on the township, Beaverville, Beaver Township line. We've got two road commissioners. Either one expressed any concerns, and actually one called that he didn't have an issue with it at all because it's already used as a truck turnaround. So it doesn't affect truck traffic any differently than it already is. So, okay. And I understand the zoning board of appeals approved it. Well, they recommended they didn't have a quorum, so oh, um, okay. they just made a recommendation in favor of it. So there's no there's no official approval or no. Okay. okay. Is there a there's not a street or a highway? Township road. It's a township road. Right on the railroad. Right on the railroad track. So it's just a typical elevator situation. Rural elevator property and 
they're just crowded where they're at and they need to it's, you know they want to make it easier to access the dump pits and sure. the old elevator is pretty old so the office is pretty old I should say. Mm -hmm. they've, they've increased capacity there quite a bit in the last three years. Terry, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. no. So um, they've you know, added quite a bit of value to Google Earth. I, I thought I did. Everybody got maps, but here's oh, okay. more Google Earth. You want to see this. As you can tell, it's truck turn around now. So mm -hmm. they've added quite a bit of value to that property in the last five years. So um, okay. that's all I have to add. Okay. Is the, are there any more comments from committee members? If not, I, 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 I have the other. Okay. Yeah. I guess I don't have that. It's in our, yeah, it's in our map. Google and the flight was about the same time, I think, actually. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve uh, the rezoning request based on the recommendation of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve it and send it on to the County Board for approval. Is there any more discussion? If not, uh, Amanda, would you do a roll call vote? Picknot? Yes. Curtis? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Persley? Yes. Okay, motion carried unanimously. So, you're approved so far. If you so uh, wish to attend the county board meeting on next Tuesday, the board meeting starts at 10. Nine. 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 Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I had 10 in my head and I told myself I was supposed to say nine and I didn't. But at any rate, the zoning um, report is usually towards the end of the meeting. so. Uh, I'm sure nothing will happen with zoning report until at least 9.30 or after. Okay. okay. And you're not required to attend, but it's always a good idea. So, anyway, any questions? questions? Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Jerry. Yep. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Next on the agenda is root review of the general ordinance. But since Dan's not here, he's having a baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Powers, mostly calving. I think we will will forego the review of the general ordinance at this time, unless anyone here really has has some comments about the general ordinance at this time. I've got a listing by thinking be great just to wait, you know, and Dan comes and then, okay. All right. and then, I mean, but if we have stuff to talk, let's talk it. So let's move on to discussion of the solar ordinance. Okay. Um, I'm sure you, few, some of you at least have looked through it, and if you have any comments, we'll go through it here. Uh, Chad, since you made it up, would you want to? Yes. Uh, just to s for a start off, I'm I'm not for solar power. Mm -hmm. I'm not for it whatsoever because it's the, the biggest thing is subsidized it, by our tax money. Exactly. Yeah, true. Exactly. I agree. I agree with you wholly. Um, the issue we have is is not whether we agree with it or not. The fact is that the government is subsidizing and they are calling and they are coming so we need to develop an ordinance that represents our interests. We need to be prepared. Yeah, we need to be prepared. It would, it, it would influence my interest if they wouldn't subsidize it. Exa exactly, but they are. And Illinois has a law that will be taking effect it's, um, July 1st. It's the Future Energy Jobs Act and that's pushing um, renewable energy careers to subsidizing schools and places to, to create those programs. It's also spending how they have the money, um, like a billion dollars over the next 12 years or whatever it is to buy um, 
uh, credit into these programs that then they resell carbon credits. So the state is pushing this and we need to make sure we have something that um, reflects what we want to protect us. <coughs> if we don't have anything, the way it works now is they would just come in and go through the ZBA and there's no guiding document for the ZBA and so they could just do whatever they want to do unless the ZBA puts restrictions or... Well, I mean, obviously the ZBA could vote against it. And the, the county board the county can. The county board could vote against it um, based on the evidence presented. Um, but even... And there's nothing to say you can't vote against it even with the, with the ordinance Correct. in place. But there's no... Just like when wind farms came in, there was really nothing... You know, they didn't totally they weren't prepared, and obviously, interest of the boards changed over time uh, as a reflection of the new how the membership of the board changed, and the wind ordinance was revised uh, a few more than once or twice, probably. And uh, so, I mean, it's you have zoning, and that's the you if you have zoning, there's counties that don't have zoning, and some wish they do, and some are glad they don't. But we have zoning. So if you have zoning, there's better be some rules in place for development that is on coming or is there. And, and from what I can see, solar is coming, whether you like it or not. So, but if you can always, you know, like I said, you have the right to vote no against it if you don't want it, and, and everybody respects that. But I don't have any guidance to tell a company what we what we want and what we expect with, if they do decide to come, because I know. Through the Farm Bureau, they're already calling local farmers. Yes. And that is a big step. So uh, The Airport Farm Bureau on July 10th, they are hosting a meeting uh, to invite landowners. They have attorneys there that are going to advise landowners on um, good practices, uh, best approach when it comes to if you are approached, how to protect yourself in the leases and what have you. So the Farm Bureau is hosting a meeting to educate their members um, and so my concern is and is if we don't have something in place to guide could we get um, screwed over as a county um, now with that being said if, if the majority of this group says no we shouldn't be wasting our time on this I'll stop it doesn't bother me I'm just concerned that we're not we need to give Bob something to show and also um, if it does come, here's how you have to do it, you know, with setbacks. And, <laughs> and um, some counties in Minnesota is leading it with having um, shrubs or evergreens to hide it and incorporating practices on how to improve the soil structure and, and flood control. And so they're using, they're using it in a way to also help the environment, to help make the soil more productive, to help um, manage water you know, for flood retention and different things. Um, some of them are doing pollinator stuff. Um, but yeah, my concern is, and the fact that um, I think Illinois has a law or will become that 30% of it, an electric com company's energy has to come from renewable. So there's some um, regulatory stuff that's going to, it's going to come somewhere. And basically all I have right now is would be A1 zoning, and then from Jim can say yes or no. I think he said he probably at this point would have to do it as a conditional use yeah, on that A1 zoning, yeah. and that's and then with no guidelines, just with the conditional use, yeah. and they would pr present a proposal and we go yay or nay. So I don't think so that's appropriate. Yes. So for example, on page, oh, did you get one of these? Dan, I wasn't sure. It's just I don't think so. Okay. So like, um, and I've got Is some more notes. Extra one? Yeah, that's yours. And I, um, you know, I put on there conditional use that solar farms shall be permitted. We can change that to where it'll be it'll still be a conditional use. If you look on number two one a, you know, we can change wording, but and and still make it conditional instead of permitted. But then it'll still give them guidance on what they have to do. Um, decommissioning is a huge, huge concern. Going back, looking at the wind notes, um, what happens when they stop? And so I think um, we have to look at reality that the government is pushing this, but we need to protect ourselves because I, 
was told south of Shan. I don't think it's Champaign County, whatever county is south of there. One of the companies that was doing it went under, and the landowners, their, their property was sold into tax sale because part of the lease agreement was that they paid all the property taxes. Well, the landowners didn't know that it wasn't being done or whatever. They didn't get notices, but anyway, it went into a tax sale. Granted, they just need to go pay the property tax to redeem, but the company didn't keep up their end. Now Did that the landowner have to pay that tax? If they want to keep their land, yes. So that's part of what the Farm Bureau is trying to do to help educate the landowners because these companies, if they are calling them and tossing, so... That, that's between the farmer... That and is, the that is. But um, <coughs> irregardless, um, if they belly up and it does go tax sale, the stuff is still there. How we still have to make sure that there's a way to remove it, you know. And we need to we need to start going through this yeah page by page here right now. Yeah, and, um, uh, get some ideas. I want to add in a couple things for you guys to think about from my research. Um, Prairie Power has two facilities. One's in Fulton County near Astoria, and another's in uh, Shelby near Shelbyville. They um, call them, and I can email from the website. They're five. They're five acre sites. They're approximately two thousand panels. They generate five hundred uh, kilowatts. Or so, um, and they call them utility scale. The u utility scale uh, projects are typically five acres, no more than seven. Some minimum of three. And it's and the utility scale definition is where the local utility is using it for their good. Now the solar farm are those big massive projects. And so those are some things to think about when we do wording in here. Do we want to just attract only the small five acre? Um, out in Newton County, up where Route 41 and Highway 10, which would be Highway 114 from Moment, um, just to the east, um, they have a three acre uh, solar site, and it's sitting on an old manufacturing site. The buildings are gone, but all the slabs are there. And Hoosier Energy is also targeting those old warehouse sites. You know, I was thinking we just stick with you know agriculture, but seeing some of those in the small uh, utility scale, um, I what brought to mind was that old boat factory in Crescent City, or just on 24. You know, it's kind of ugly. If we worded, if we made something where that is a location where we can get rid of some dilapidated buildings. Or, you know, they knock it down, but then put it, put solar panels there, and they don't take farmland away. But at least that land now is beneficial. It's generating income, generating tax revenue. So that's something to think about. Um, that I haven't written in here, and I just want to toss that out because I'm still getting some more to dig in on it. But it just got me thinking that we may not want to stick with just ag districts. We might want to think of those old dilapidated warehouse sites that no one's coming to. How can we turn those back productive for the tax rolls? Um, and so that's something that's not in this, but just for you to think about and let me know. Um, so um, I've gotten Mark Simons emailed me, the resident. Um, I've gotten calls from the Farm Bureau. Mark sent me a ton of stuff. Um, he loves the solar stuff, and um, so we talked. Um, but anyway. Well, page one um, under you know to the zoning districts conditional use. Um, you know I'm going to circle the permitted piece, and that's something you know Dan you know mentioned. You know you're not in favor. Maybe we change it to a conditional to where it still goes to the ZBA um, versus being permitted. Um, you know that's something to think about. Um, design standards. Um, because you're going to, no matter what, even if you make it permitted, you're, you're still going to want to go through the hearing process because they're going to have to submit their plans and their... Exactly. Their, so I don't... There's so maybe there's verbiage, so we leave it conditional, but here it is, the guidelines <coughs> for it. So, you know, um, design standards, um, uh, The design standards that are listed in our current ordinance for A1, A2 um, are suspended because solar will have a different setback and different 
Um, and I took some of that verbiage from what the wind farms that talked about um, the design standards being not the normal bulk usage setbacks. Um, and that the setback stuff, when we turn the page and we get to it, that's going to be where our conversation focuses. Um, foundations, this is, I copied this off Kankakee County. Um, the manufacturers, engineer, you know, basically the, the we have to have a sort of an engineered certification that it's accepted and, uh, and this is some of where I get guidance from Bob. Um, item two, standards and codes. Uh, this, this, this oh. The point and that oh, sorry. I'm, just uh, stop me. <laughs> John has put some stuff together here about Sweet. that. Um, and I'll take photocopies, too, of it so I can reword. Anyway, J John suggests that a qualified professional engineer hired by the county and uh, paid for by the applicant. Okay. Therefore, you don't get the feud exactly. the company. Um, and when we're done, if I can get a copy of that. I'll just, it'll be easier to type it in right, because, yeah, that, that's yeah, something we want. Yeah, hey John, this is his copy. Okay, because uh, I'll type that verbiage in. Yeah, okay, that's that's the only I'm thing so here so far. Okay. Go, we can move on to... Yeah, I'll let you control it, because I can talk. Um, so Do you see anything on two that you... Uh, two is, is about the codes. Um, again, Kankakee, Edwardsville, they all have the wording saying it has to be in compliance with the local, state, federal standards in, in the NEC. Um, the one constituent from Watiga that called me said all you need to do is have it um, apply to the NEC. You know, I explained to him, no, we, we want to have, if we want some local code to um, strengthen it, we should be able to, to make it stronger than the NEC. Number three, anything on item three, power and communication. Yeah, both John and I made a note that the cables should be buried six feet underground as, as per our wind ordinance. That's what's in it, too. I, okay. I put it in here, or I made a note that it maybe should be, I'll throw it out here, what do you think? Should be six feet outside of the solar farm property. In in the solar farm itself, do we want to do you we want to care? Do you want to just come sit here with us and I mean, because you have notes, I mean, it'd be we need it. Um, but I I I put the question out: Is do, does it need to be six feet deep, right in the solar panel property, under the solar panel, or whatever? So within the property, this. Do we need to require the six foot? But outside, outside where the other, fencing. If they if they get yeah. a, a permission to go across uh, some farmer's mm -hmm. field to exactly get to the power grid, then I think it should be six feet like this. Yeah. But does it need to be six feet in the solar farm itself? Um, can I make a suggestion? Sure. We're only on page two of nine, and. Jim's got port, I'm sure. Oh, oh, okay. Um, okay. Well, can we get moved yes. around yes. our ordinance stuff and get that out of the way, and then they can take off, and then we can. Sure, I'll move to. Uh, exactly. okay. so, yeah, that's yeah. that's suspend this and this whole. Uh, okay. So what do we get, what do we have next here? I don't let them stand there at all. That's why Jim. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. I've got Terry here. Terry is here. Yeah. For what? For the groundwater ordinance for the Howard <coughs> Industry plant down there in Milford. Okay. Well, Jim, what do you got? Yeah, well, I was contacted uh, actually last year by an attorney law firm out of uh, near Springfield. And uh, they represent First Financial Bank, who bought the, uh, the old Howard Industries property. So as part of uh, working with uh, the EPA, there, there may be some contamination in some of the properties around there. Some of that, the neighboring properties, is in our jurisdiction, county jurisdiction. So what they would like us to do is adopt a groundwater ordinance uh, that pertains to the county jurisdiction property that basically, and I'll have Mr. Hyman uh, explain this much better than I will, uh, but basically restricts the drilling of any potable wells in this area. Any what? Potable wells, wells for drinking water. Oh. And uh, so they're asking the county to adopt an ordinance uh, that would detail what which properties we're talking about 
that would prohibit these, pro these properties from digging wells for drinking water use. Mm -hmm. And they want Mil the village of Milford to do the same thing for properties in their jurisdiction. So they're asking them to, to adopt a similar ordinance. Um, so they're doing it on a parallel basis. And what Terry is about to will explain to you what, what impact that has for these property owners and kind of why why they're asking us to do this groundwater ordinance. Mm -hmm. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is our current Iroquois County ordinance on um, what, 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 water wells. I got yeah, one. So. John, you want one? You already got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you look under section, uh, I believe it's three, next page over, it actually, oh, I'm sorry, man. Okay. On section three, it talks about if a person's going to put a water well in for drinking purposes, that it should be um, encouraged to hook to the town's water supply. So there is that provision in the ordinance already. The ordinance is what uh, allows the health department to utilize the state code book. Now in the state code book, there is distances that everybody has to stay away from certain contamination. For example, if you have something real nasty on your property, you have to drill your well at least 75 feet from that. If it's on your neighboring property, then you have to drill 200 feet away from it. So there is provisions in here to make all drinking water safe. Now, what this ordinance does is it allows the owners of that property to get out of sampling and waste it because they're not going to be anybody drinking water on this property. If there's something bad on the property, it should be sampled and cleaned up, not just um, brushed under the table. Yeah. So this protects the company <coughs> that bought Howard? It protects them. Yeah, so protects yeah. Anybody yeah. And really hurts the surrounding property yeah. owners. I mean, you, we have no idea if there is anything bad there. I don't have any monitoring wells. Uh, any mo mo monitoring well that goes in is supposed to go, I get the well off. I'm supposed to have the well off. I don't have any. That's state law. John, you got a question? You got a question, John? <coughs> I guess my question is, do we know or is there a possibility that this would interface with the project to uh, put an overpass on the railroad track right there? I have no idea what, why they want this. They want this. this to so that they don't have to clean up that property. I understand, but there's going to be a huge project there to build this overpass that's going to impact that whole area significantly. And I'm wondering if what they're asking, if they're trying to protect themselves from some liability for cleaning up, if there is groundwater contamination and that ground is disturbed in that project, is that going to create a situation that could be harmful not only to people, and I don't know if we would have any liability associated with that either, but... Right now it falls on to the property owner. It sounds, it sounds to me like maybe this is tied into that in some way that we may not know about. So, boy. Possible. Well, so, but yeah. it ties, but John, yeah. I don't know. I'm Currently, exactly. the I don't know if either. You, if you do this, if, if the county would approve this, that sweeps it all under the table. Any potential contamination. So we have protects now, them from being sued. Protects them from being sued. Yeah. Now, the same token, each of these properties can drill a well. They can come through me with a permit to drill a well for a geothermal well or a well for non-possible purposes. Okay, if there's contamination there, they're still drilling through the same contamination that you would for a drinking water. Now in the code, if there is contamination, they're supposed to take care of it. There's provisions in the law that's on the books already. All this does, all this piece of paper does is sweeps it under the table for that, that property owner not to have any liability. Right now, if you drill a well there and it shows up contamination, and you can prove it came from John Doe, you have every right to sue John Doe. John Doe is responsible for providing you water for the rest of your life. That's for washing your hands, bathing, whatever you want to use. If you want to keep the faucet r r running nonstop, John Doe is paying for it. If this passes, there's no liability for him. I guess that's part of my question because in, in, <coughs> the, 
further into this project to build that overpass, there's going to be a lot of disturbance of all the, all the ground in that area. They're going to be digging so ponds, the they're going to build up. I mean, that's... Let me pass around a map, um, kind of a condensed map, but it shows the outline in blue here is the old Howard Industries building. Pardon? That's what's in Corp, too. Okay. Yeah, correct. And then the county part is uh, this part uh, in uh, brownish green. Do you have a board member that lives right there? Yeah, correct. Donna Crow oh, okay. lives right here. Yeah, okay. And I think she owns she owns part of that property. Part of this property. So I'll let you circulate that if you want. Now at this point, we have no idea if those people have been contacted or what type of deal. Uh, just like I said, I don't so have any family. I just, and if you read so what's it's written in here, the I think we need to we need them to provide us more information. Need more the, information. Uh, some of about the um, potential where the uh, conditions for the class one bit discharge, if there's potential there. So they're not even saying there's contaminants on the property. They're just saying there's potential. So so, how does so this would just blindly sweep it through that they wouldn't be any sampling done. But I think their concern has to do with, I'm suspecting anyway, that their concern has to do with this highway project because that, if they're digging dirt and moving dirt around, what's on the west side of the road could end up over on the east side of the road or vice versa. It can get, if it is contaminated and gets on someone else's property, <coughs> uh, I think we... But it's talking about groundwater, John, not surface, or not the soil. Not the soil. This is groundwater. <laughs> feet deep. Pardon? A typical monitoring well goes in about 20 foot down. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they monitor the groundwater down there. The drinking water, Milford's one of the shallowest areas of Iroquois County for the drinking water. Wells in that area run anywhere from about 45 foot to 140. Mm -hmm. Going to di di different parts of the county, it's 140 on up. Mm -hmm. But it's one of the shallower areas. But you also have to remember there's a lot of nasty clay between the surface and down to the aquifer. So what is the disadvantage to the county if we do not approve this? Jim? No, it, it, yeah, there's no requirement. They're asking us to do this really as a favor. Um, can they force us to, to approve this? No, not at all. And I can see no advantage to us. No. And that's why I'm glad Terry got involved and, and uh, me and Bob because well, and, but there's a huge disadvantage if you approve this, yeah. li liability-wise, because you're telling the property owners that not the property owner of this Power. potentially contaminated, but the people around that area, you're telling them they can never have a potable water well drilled on their property. So if they go to sell their property 10 years from now to somebody and they want to build a house there, they can't do it. Unless the city or the village of Milford extends their water line. But, right. even, but even with that, if I bought the property and I wanted to fight it all the way through the Fed Court, I would probably win because it's my property you're restricting it. It's only an ordinance. And what that ordinance does is that kills the private well ordinance for drilling a well in that area. So that refers them back to the state of Illinois, where I'm not sure if the state of Illinois would then be the only, or would allow them to, to drill, drill, drill a well there or not because our jurisdiction would be excluded from that little piece of ground. Mm -hmm. The current ordinance says it's throughout the county. So Jim would have to dig into the legality of it to see <coughs> if that throws everything out or even if that ordinance has to be amended. But then who's going to issue the wills? Because everybody has the right to petition for a will. They come to me, I look over it. If, I, if there's something that I cannot issue it, they have, in the ordinance, they have a hearing right to go in front of D. The case is presented, the client, I present mine, D makes her findings. If, if D goes uh, not, not in favor of it, the same thing, it goes to the Board of Health. They can make the fi final decision. So there's set stuff in place now. What this thing does would allow the owner of the property to sweep it under the table. And then does that lay the responsibility back on the county? More likely if I bought the property and I wanted to to build a house there and have a, my own well and not hook to the town. I have every legal right to take it all the way up the food chain. So then Jim's got to get involved. The state's got to get involved. 
So I, I'm seeing here that if this company would commit to building a facility to hire 500 employees on the condition that we approve this, that maybe that would be an advantage to the county. But I can't see that there's any promise of benefit to us. But even with that, with the 500 people, with even the 500 people that they talk about hiring, you still have the potential for contamination. They're wanting they want to get clean sweep. Out we of put it. under the cat cat counter. They want to reduce. You're the telling them they don't have to clean up their property. Yeah. But I'm yes, saying something there. What I'm saying, you, we trade you 500 employees for you uh, giving us complete immunity, and okay, I don't but see but that. You're but signing but off on property that. orders. Think that, about that for a minute, Marvin. Those 500 employees are going to have need. You know. You're going to tell them that, yeah, you know, we'll give you a job here, but you can't drink any water from here. <laughs> yeah. you well, the town water. I mean, I think I know what Marvin's trying to say is if they were actually going to come in and build a business that will provide extremely needed jobs, then we would have something to really discuss. But right now, there's nothing, there, there's nothing set for, please, you know, approve this so we don't have to be liable anymore. That's exactly what I'm And saying. so since there's nothing... But you're, to discuss but what you prove this, you're on the value side. You're adversely affecting private property owners' exactly. value, value of their property and any any potential for future development. And then if they would have to go to the city of Milford to be either annexed or run water lines to those properties for development, I'll bet you nine out of ten times almost 95% guarantee that the city of Melford would say, yeah, we'll run it to you, but you're paying for it. Yeah, well, like the Shell Oil spill up right. there. I mean, all those people, and I have right. friends, you know, Absolutely. they're finally getting private water, and, and I agree with Marvin, there's there's nothing, there, it's just, and, and, and have and they and talked to any neighbors? And Shell Oil, my knowledge, Shell Oil litigation took over almost 15 years. Oh, yeah, and it's still not it's still done. Totally done. Yeah. So I'm throwing this out here to get yeah. good discussion like this about what could happen and what. Well, how would you feel in two years from now? They say we are going to employ 500 people. Yeah. yeah. Well, then yeah. they can clean up their property. And then the site would have to be cleaned up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is just a step to get them out of under it's the To get the bank. Yeah. 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 You so have any idea what it costs to clean that property up? I have no idea. They don't know if it's contaminated. They don't know if it's contaminated. We don't have anything to show. But it's a strange coincidence that it, it's occurring at the same time this highway project, which is a massive project, is going to occur over time. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's and, just like and they've owned the property for nine years now, is it? The bank. Eight years? Why I have no idea how long. The bank, bank owns the property. Yeah, it's been about that. The point. bank owns the, the property. The bank, yeah. They want out of the liability. They want out of the liability. I say no. Um, so if we don't do anything, does that mean? Yeah, we're not. I'm only bringing this to you because they asked me to. Okay. And, uh, so they I, need to be I here. I really appreciate Gary getting involved because it really opened my eyes as to what the real impact of uh, approving this would be. And we don't really know if there's contamination. We do not. We know not. nothing. They're very well up and, and, and I'm getting almost bet you the bank and the under more EPA knows. Somebody yeah. Somebody knows. Knows. Exactly. Exactly. Somebody knows exactly, the and they're not here yeah. they're to not answer here. questions. So they've been testing that site since they tore the building. So they probably got they hold that railroad thing and I never got a copy of the monitoring wells. Yeah, I'm gonna pass all we have. So is there, there agenda to action or just discussion? I then I, I would motion, I would vote no, or I would move. Your agenda says it's just a discussion. So okay. Yeah, no I would say yeah. discussion. Okay. Just if we, discussion. If we take no go. action on it, then... If you take no action, I can call her back, and I will, and say that the, that the uh, committee took no action, and I presume at full board, the, you know, you can make your arguments uh, to yeah. benefit the yeah. no. They really want they need to bring data to us. Yeah, and that's what I'll tell them, too. Yeah. If you really want this uh, done, you're going to have to come here and meet with the zoning board first and the whole county board to explain the benefits to the county of approving this kind of an ordinance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What do you think it would cost to get that? I have no idea. I mean, not that we're going to. I'm just... They're, yeah, they need what to. their responsibility. What, that, what this actually does is get them out, out of the doing it. But it's a pretty big area they're going to test, isn't it? Well, it all depends on the based spread, on the right? way they want the properties going, they've had a water hydrologist, I think is the term, study which way the water flows. As you can tell, the water, if you look at the map, it flows from 
that's basically Howard's for the West in this aspect. I, they didn't submit the one from Milford, so I'd assume that it would cover half of that, too. It's, so that's the way they get the groundwater flowing. What they want you to do is not issue a, anybody a drinking well in that area. Then they need to pay for because Milford to accept. Because if you read the, into the EPA rules, it says that gets them, you know, there's no well going in, then there's no way any contamination is going to get in the drinking supply for that person. How big an area are they wanting to have no well they go Bobby down the map from the map from what you're for every it's a big all this yes, yellow there's several parcels okay. and over here and uh, you know does not crawl on city water or well water and then the and the overpass is like right up here on that and yeah. yeah. house is that now she owns some of that farm now she's trying to protect it's some of the local property they're not bringing the benefits I don't know Dr. Brown should have the gas station convinced the village board to do that so they could sell it Carolyn Looker no one will touch it now and Fred and Glover Glover okay I have no idea if they've contacted these people or not. I, it, I just saw it on the agenda. It caught my eye. Well, I got hold of Jim. If they've got well, wells on their property, would that be a test? Test their test their. There's a, there's several of these ordinances that have been passed. <laughs> Ashcombe has one. Savannah has one. Watsika has two. Um, I mean, and Buckley has got one. Uh, and I've, I've actually issued a issue well permit for the one here on Seagull. Um, over here at the car wash. Do all this. Yeah. Um, that one has a non-potable supply. Yeah. That's in the affected <laughs> area for the Watsika one. And we assume no one's drinking the car wash water. <laughs> it doesn't well, offered me a glass the other day. <laughs> Did you look at the main point is it's just the drinking I well. It. But you're still allowing in these areas yeah. that they say may be affected, they can come in and take out a permit for a non potable supply, like that one over there. They punch through the area down to the aquifer and they're drawing water out of it. Wells are constructed so that there shouldn't be any contaminants get in from the surface all the way down to the aquifer. They they have them grouted and make sure that they're at the right locations from everything. But I mean that should, you know, what they're what this gets them out of is, oh no one will ever have any trouble. Well the contaminant may still be there. Yeah. Yeah, they need to provide information, talk to us and talk to the landowners around. I mean, if all the landowners came in and said, Well you're fine with it that's a little different story. But there's nothing. Right, right, that. Well, there's nothing. No way a landowner is going to say that. Well, <laughs> it's not like that. well they have to pay me big bucks to tell me that there's I have a dollar amount that because you're tying up someone's property. Exactly, there's a dollar amount that, but that's their. Mm -hmm. That would be their call. That's their exactly. Call, right. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. All right, All right guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Go have fun now. Oh, good old day. Bring a paddle. Yeah. Okay, we were at uh, okay. number three here on the second page. Talking about buried cables, right? Yeah, do the cables need to be buried six feet deep in the solar farm facility? As there will be no farming being done. It might not, I mean, it, if you're talking a short distance, maybe it wouldn't matter anyway. Yeah. So within the fenced area, we probably sh not should remove the requirement, but outside yeah. The, the outside definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so that means that means that they're going along. They'll cut through mm -hmm. some of these drain tiles, but then going forward, their cable is underneath the drain tile, okay. not above it. Mm -hmm. So right. inside, not required. Outside. Okay. Yeah. I guess that's all right. I mean, personally, I would stop it all the way. But that's fine. Well, I'm just asking. I mean, so I can make <coughs> revision changes and notes and. But what's the consensus here? Well, if your thing is, let's say here's your here's your farm and you're coming right out here with your, you know, got your lines all coming or whatever collecting and you come out here, maybe maybe there is a reason not to have to bury them too deep if they got wires coming off of every collector. You know, to yeah, a exactly. Central point, but then somewhere along the line, you know, if they come right to the fence, <coughs> you're going to have to drop down yeah. six feet or something. So the main thing is if there's any digging ever of any kind on there yep. within there that would where they would hit the wires, 
and somebody could get injured or killed or whatever. That, that. One thing also that it just came to mind is if a landowner has a farm <coughs> upstream, so to or higher ground, and the drainage tile goes under that farm, then there probably should be some restriction as to not obstruct the, the drainage tile as it goes under the farm. I don't know how we put that in there. But. I'll think um, uh, provision, I'll type something, provision to protect the farmer's tile. Yeah, something like that. I'll Any tile coming through that land, mm -hmm. it, sh it should be kept open. Uh, but it also raises the question, and at some point in time, that tile needs to be repaired or replaced. How are you going to get access to that? Well, how do they do it right now? They have to go work with the neighbors and convince yeah. other neighbors to let you go through their land. And yeah, no, but I, if you already have a structure there, that <laughs> the maintenance yeah. is because these old clay tile, it happens to me all the time. Oh, I know. They'll they'll break Flat, and collapse yeah. and a hole. Yep, I so, fix them all the time. Yeah. Okay. So somehow that has to be maintained. And, uh, how do you police something like this? <laughs> well, so that was fast. How do you police it? Um, well, you'd, you'd find out about it if, 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 your, if your land <coughs> had a solar farm on it and my land is next to it and my drain tiles go right, right through there and all of a sudden my drain tile ain't working and I can see it's on your property, you and I are going to have a problem. Yeah, and I've seen it already, I mean, trying... Along with, along with the drainage district. Yeah, trying to fix the... One farmer up where we are said, no, you're not coming through. And so they had to reroute. I mean, it was crazy because yeah. the main that was there and there was no um, uh, easement agreement or whatever as far as being able to keep that main open. And so some of that may fall on the Farm Bureau advising the landowners to... Well, it's the same with your transmission lines for your yeah. wind towers yeah. because a lot of property owners, especially up in Kankakee, uh, Melks Grove and the Kankakee area, when they brought the transmission lines from Ford County, the non-participating owners made them divert the transmission lines, so you get a little mm -hmm. ink every once in a while. Yeah, and it's, I've been seeing it with a few farmers up there. If they don't, mm -hmm. depends on who's wanting to they, run they it. Approach the non-participating people first to see if it, you know, if there was a. And some took, some took some um, financial re um, to, to allow. Others said, "Not a chance. You're you're going around." Yeah, I, I you are right. So, but when you got a when you have a drain tile, right? You know, like you know, like Marvin's talking about, a clay drain tiles have probably been there for 50, 60 years or longer. Yeah, and yeah, at what I, point in when those were put in, there must have been some agreement of some sort to allow uh, that to happen. A lot of us were. Doesn't out. that transfer with ownership of the land and so forth? If you can find that, if you can find, find any agreement. kind of documentation through the drainage district to see what was done, that's yeah. hard. But, yeah, I know the couple instances we have, it's it's not there. Um, one of the farms, it's the Milk's Grove dr District, and it's a 12-inch main that runs through, and it keeps crashing, and we keep trying to fix it. And um, they went, her, the farmer that I helped went to the Milk's Grove and said, you know, to the drainage, they said, you're supposed to maintain this. And they said, there's nothing in our agreement that we have to maintain the tile when it was created because mm -hmm. they can't find it. So, even though he believed there was, because his uncle owned the land and there was a verbal, but they're avoiding. Okay, well, what about the principle that I've been told, and I've been, I emphasize been told, that if his farm is next to mine and my water's coming down there, my drain tile, and it breaks on his now, I got a lot of surface water that's going to run off onto his place. He has to take that water, isn't that right? Yeah, where the water runs. Well, if it's a natural flow of water, it has to be yeah. taken. I'm not sure how, how drain well, tile that bubbles up works. Most, most drain tiles follow the natural flow of water. Yeah, don't yeah. yeah. but I'm, I think that means surface water. Yeah, and most of the tiles, it's not that they're bubbling up, they're collapsing down in. Yeah, and I understand it, but if you've got a blow-off pipe there, it'll come out of that. Yeah, yeah, if there's a blow-off <coughs> pipe. But, no, I hear you. I'm going to try to write we'll something in there. there. We'll right next and that might be something for me to ask the Farm Bureau how we should write something, too. I, yeah, I, I think something should be put in there that the existing drainage tile must be maintained in the, yeah. land, in the far, solar farm yeah. area. Isn't there, isn't there worry in the uh, wind tower agreements? Because they always for damaging 
farm tiles or there's something in those. Or they, they I'll were go look it up. Property. They were required to re, to repair it. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll look at the Whatever job they did was never in, inspected. You know, right. Gloria right. was in charge of that at that time. And are the they the brothers suing? Yeah. Still suing the wind tower for their damage? And okay. the same thing applied back then. I don't know with the pilot hill, if, if you have any way of, or did verify that those lines were put six feet down, but initially when, like out in Sheldon was put together, and there was nobody out there watching what they did. Well, um, the, it it wasn't required uh, six feet because it was know, grandfathered it was, in. It was four feet or something yeah. like that, <laughs> though. But though nobody, I mean, if you went out there and dug them all up, I bet you'd find some were only two feet. Well, yeah. Who well, knows? Yeah. At the, at the <coughs> Sheldon Wind Farm, I was watching and driving around sometimes, and they were working in horribly muddy conditions. And I'll bet you anything that they're they're not all yeah. four feet deep. How deep did they put? They're supposed to put it four, four feet. feet. Yeah, it was four feet. Then four. we changed it to six to conform with the Champagne Ordinance. I think it was there, where it was. But the idea was to get it below the drain tile, mm -hmm. so that any future drain tile work wouldn't they wouldn't be cutting those lines. Yeah. Well, anyway, if that we can move on. Yeah, I'll that. I'll make some notes and uh, again I'll email it out to everyone. And uh, the, number four, the minimum lot size. Now, why why is seventy five acres and not uh, less? I went. I just put seventy five in just because that seems to be the trend for any form of development in our existing A one A two. You know that if you want to build anything, if you're not the owner, <coughs> but. So I just threw that number out. I've seen for solar farms, and, and remember, I learned some new definitions. You know, new utility scale is a different definition. But so sticking with the solar farm where it's like over 10 acres. Um, Kankakee County, I think, has, I want to say 60, but I think they changed it to 20 acres. Um, I, I've seen different various. So I just picked that because that's what was in our ordinance. And so that's the discussion is, how many acres? How many acres? What's the minimum size for a solar farm, not utility scale? Because that I'm going to have to word definitions in. Well, if you're coming into A1, that's pretty much goes along with that anyway, right? Well, we um, if we stick if we keep with 75 acres, that's what's A1 for. You know, if you're not the landowner, you need 75 acres to do anything. Do we want it to be less? Do we want to allow a solar farm on 20 acres of land? Probably something to think about. It's something to chew on. That that's a key. Yeah. I got a question mark. <coughs> yeah, that's a key thing on. You know, seventy-five acres may restrict. You know, it may support your your view on. Um, you know, I really don't like them, and so if we make the acreage size larger, it um, this it, it discourages development. If we make it. 20 acres for a solar farm and that encourages the development. So I think it's a matter of what our our attitude is or, or feeling is as far as how encouraging do we want to be to a company coming in. It'd be nice to tell them they couldn't take any prime property if it's a junk property or sand. Well, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I've been seeing like Newton County and Hoosier Energy They've been taking doing utility scale, but they've been taking those junk properties, yeah. Yeah, and and that right. that I have to write into this because that's a different definition in the solar <coughs> farm thing. You could have well, a about, separate ordinance to cover it. Yeah. What about designated wetlands? Is that an issue? Well, that would be. Yeah, that would be. Uh, that'd be a that would that would be covered under a different law as far as development on a wetland. Water would, the, yeah. Soil and water would be involved in that, and then I'm sure their their rules would override anything. So that's hard to guess, and I don't know. I'm not an expert on it. But so, but then, uh, um, yeah. Yeah. So does the uh, county get any tax money off of this every year? Yeah. Well, I mean, there. I mean, obviously, my on my my assessment side, we are having discussions statewide of how to value these. We have a couple of areas that already have, uh, South County has a fairly good sized solar farm and they assess it a certain way. Um, and get a payment every year? Yeah, they get, and, and, yeah. and then, but also with, when you're talking about acreage restrictions, <coughs> you're still talking, you know, there, there's some private property rights too. And 
mean, obviously, you say take prime farm ground out of production. Well, there's some pretty prime farm ground that's not in production because they're taking advantage of oh, that's set aside yeah. or whatever. CPR yeah. and mm -hmm. government yeah. programs to plant this wild grass flower for the bees and stuff. Yeah. Right. And they're you know so I mean obviously it's an ag related with you know, bee, you know chatting a lot about bees too. But I just you know I just don't think that all our farm ground in the county is under production because it's not. No. A lot that's not. There's it's a lot. getting more and more coming taken out every year. Well, what we have the right to tell them, don't put it here, but you can put it there? Well, I mean, that's, that's why we're having this discussion. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to gauge from, from you guys as far as what... What does, like, organizations like Farm Bureau and stuff like this have? Have they got any, have been given any input? The only thing they've talked to me about is, you, you know, we'd like to see you develop something. Yeah. Because we want to protect our membership. But it's, to them, it's still private. Some of it still runs, comes under private property. What they can and cannot do with their eight, their 40 acres of farm ground, because um, you do have a lot of uh, long distance ownership, not actual farmers, but people who own ground that cash rent it out, and they just decide, you know, I can get a 25 year lease. Don't have to worry about renegotiating my contract rent every. Two years, probably a better payment. Take and it could be a yeah. I have no idea because we'll never get privy to the no lease but term financial terms, mm -hmm. and they'll say, you know what, I'm in California. I don't really care. I just signed this year this big lease, and I don't have to worry about it. And yeah. they get with their farm owners, sure, yeah. sure. Europe or well, I don't know. We have that. I mean, we percentage wise, we have a few, but you do, we do have a lot of ownership that's not within within Iroquois County mm -hmm. right? and um, and they obviously cash rent to local farmers but in you know I so I mean that's just something to think about as far as the incentive for because they're not going to approach the cash rent farmer they're going to approach the property owner yeah and it could be a doctor <coughs> it could be a, it could be a it could be a it could be some kind of a uh, like a nursing home they own nursing homes own ground um, and and it's taxable, even though, you know they still pay tax, but they have to worry about cash rent and all that. And then their boards may say, you know what, we're being offered a 20-year lease on this. Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty good to us. It's guaranteed income, and and then sign a lease. That's just mm -hmm. stuff that stuff that will happen. And uh, so um, if you, but if you like, if you restrict it to 75 acres, that it's more restrictive than 40 acres would be or 20. And it makes it less doable for some because not every track is 75 acres. I mean, there's a lot of people that own a lot of acres, more than 100, 200 acres, but they're not all together. Right. It could be 40, 40 yeah. here, 40 so, a couple miles over. Yeah. You know, it all depends. So that's the part to think on, and just advise me, and you know, I'll put what the consensus is. Um, but that was just the number I tossed. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So. And again, that's for solar farm, not utility scale, and that's a different thing I've been reading on the National Renewable Energy Co-op. Definitions are different. So just something to think on and call me or shoot me an email or if you have opinions, yeah. But um, Let's move on yeah. into height and setbacks. That, the height I copied off the Kinky counties, and then I also kind of did some basic research, and most of them stay under 30 feet. But it's to prevent the tall structures, and 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 so they have to find lots that have open area, you know, to be able to for angles and all that. Um, thirty feet's pretty high. Yeah, thirty feet high, and yeah, that's just, yeah. that seems to be what the the standard is. So I just went with that, and I've seen that on the Vote Solar thing and the um, Illinois Grow Solar that everything's under that. Mm -hmm. um, number six. That's the big one to talk about too. You know, number four, number six is setback. Mm -hmm. um, I went through and, and looked at some of the different ones. Minnesota recommended for the university, um, and their their view is also trying to develop it for wildlife because that's their resource too. Um, and so, a uh, hundred feet all around, and then by anything near a resident have to be 100 feet, 150 feet away. Mm -hmm. And a little bit later on, you'll see where I talk about um, 
evergreens and different things to put around it. Part of that was that they then create a 50-foot buffer of wild of trees or sh evergreen tr shrubs and stuff like that, and then also the grasses and everything. And it's all to help uh, protect the water resource for them, to improve the soil stability, and then um, also and also to create a massive fire hazard. Well, it can, but they've talked about that. There's but um, no, question about no. That it is. so so all this stuff is um, you know I just kind of thinking that our county that we kind of want to protect farmland more than develop it. The setbacks are more on the restrictive side. Kankakee, I think, just has a 50 foot thing. Mm -hmm. So it that stuff. You know, if you have any notes on it. Um, yeah. You know, John, John has some notes. Yeah, I don't have any go. opinion. The Zoning here. Board of Appeals has no authority to grant a variance. Only the county can do that. So you need to change that part. What that, the county board just put, get rid of the Zoning Board of Appeals and put county? Right here. You can just say county. That's okay. sufficient. Or Let county me. board. And then the, the last sentence really doesn't, can be, can taken out there really approval or denial but it's not binding yeah again this I know this verbiage was copied from Kankakee as far as that well, the last zoning, I don't believe their zoning board of appeals has any no, authority no. either but <laughs> public rights <laughs> of no they don't hear yeah no this is why I'm wanting uh, public rights of way yeah I just put and, and here because that's in other words if they want a variance and if the owners of the yeah. adjoining properties agree and then the last sentence I you would struck. take that up okay completely. that works for me yeah, good point. I didn't yeah. get that one. Yeah, and that's why I'm hoping people look at this to help me. Okay. We threw with six? Yeah. Seven. Screening and fencing. Um, do we want them to have a fence around it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It needs to have you a know. fence. But no way you can so, do that. And then the, the Knox box, um, me and Marvin talked about that. That's for oh. the EMS. How secure is that? <coughs> it's the, I, the, the fire, the EMS crew is away from what I understand by reading on what Knox boxes are. They're supposed to have the key to be able to get into it so that on an emergency they can, for fires, whatever, they can then get immediate access instead of having to wait for... How secure is the Knox box? It's supposed to be secure. That means it's the... Bandos, bandos can't... Is it with a sledgehammer or something? To get well, I mean, vandals, all they got to do is just take some wire snips. Cut the fence. Cut the well, fence. They don't need the, I, I the knock the box. I understand that part, but it's so you, you, yeah. you can lock your front door, but somebody can break the window and come in. And well, that would be the responsibility of the solar owner to make sure that it's secure, right. but it also balances. Now, the reason I'm asking yeah. is because as an alternative to that, you can, you can say that the owners, you know, if the, the fences are locked and so forth, they can give a key to all of the various emergency agencies, it, so if they're called out yeah. there, they already have a we, key with them. We can do that too. So you know, I can scratch that, that and just put keys. I, I just wanted to know how yeah. secure the knock box is, that's all. I mean, it, to me, you got an option to go either way. Yeah. But I, my main thing was just making sure that on that, the emergency, they can get in there without having to just tear down fences, you know, they can easily get it. My thing is access for fire crews in case, you know, stuff starts burning. So it's more to protect that, but the neighbors. Well, if there is a fire, chances are by the time the fire department gets there, we all True, on. true. <laughs> but you get we know they'll get there quicker get, than... You get evergreen hedges and, and weeds growing up burning. I mean, you're... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah. have much faith in our fire departments to each other. Um, no, I, I, I recognize how, from forest fires how quickly evergreens burn and how yeah. much of an explosion it is and um, that sort of thing. Just to help move... Um, and that, uh, let me just Oh, yeah, go one, ahead. Because uh, the fire hazard comes in with the next one. But in my con my concern with the fire hazard situation also relates to your setbacks in terms of adjacent residential property. If you have a fire and that evergreen hedge explodes like mm -hmm. that, uh, are you, how, how far do you have to be away from that residential property to not endanger them? I'm wondering uh, about the explosion of um, evergreens in, in this area where there's lots of moisture. I don't think they're quite as susceptible as they are in a lot of fire 
<laughs> droughty areas. I, I've got some now that I've been working with Marvin. I guarantee you, boom. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to bring the marshmallows out and all see. Those, all those forests out in Oregon and Washington and places like that, they get a lot of rain. And when they have a forest fire, they have a law out there that every person driving a car has to carry a bucket and a shovel in their trunk. And if there's a fire, they pull you over the side of the road and they drag you out and you get out there and fight that fire <laughs> with everybody else. You yeah. can have a suit and a tie on, they could care less, so away you go. And if you don't have a <laughs> shovel and a bucket, they'll throw you in jail. And that's no, that's no exaggeration. They will do that. Do they have to carry liability insurance if a kid gets in there and gets hurt or something? Oh. Surely there would. We don't have anything in here yet about insurance. Yeah. That I, that I they, no, they, that they make you carry tire chains too. They make you. Oh yeah, I know that. Right. Yeah. I lived out there for about yeah. ten years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when, when there's when there's the snow falling in the mountains, they got a sign right by the side of the road. They put the sign down to change our retirement. Right in the middle of the road. And there's okay. a trooper sitting right there in the car. If you go past that sign without change, they'll arrest you. Right you can have a four-wheel drive vehicle. Okay. Okay. So we don't need tire chains and yeah. pillar. Yeah. I'll let. Yeah. <laughs> I work, I'm just saying it, it is a, a tremendous fire hazard, and it, it also impacts into the growth of weeds and so forth within there. You know, if you got 75 acres and you got a solar farm, weeds are going to come up wherever they can, but underneath the, the panels probably, even though it yeah. doesn't yeah. hit a lot of sunlight. Are you going to make them mow that down? Or that is there is of that's that part of what we can do. That there's a section. Is no. some common sense to protect your investment just a little bit, though? Well, but, <laughs> hey, it all depends. I know. There is a depends. section on page 7 when we get to item D up here about weed and grass control. Right. I know. So, I know. I got that. Okay. I I just, a, I've got a question on, yeah. on A here at the top of page 4 about the deciduous buffer. How can a deciduous buffer uh, disguise the solar farm in the wintertime? How it is... Am I missing something here? No. Um, this came off of what town? Most of them are the evergreens, but it had to do with the the soil structure and um, the capability of evergreens versus deciduous trees, mm -hmm. and and so I can stripe that. You know, I just took, and I think this came off of the. National Re uh, Renewable Energy Co-op um, recommended ordinance, mm. um, and so um, that can be struck where we keep it with evergreen so that it does hide. That's I think Marvin has a good point. I yeah, think, and I think if somebody or if even we later on feel that evergreens is not the best way, maybe we can require that they put up some kind of a high wood, wood fence or mm -hmm. something, you know, picket fence or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so I can strike that last sentence part, you know, or an alternative. I mean, because I agree with you, but we I want it to be hid. Deciduous probably is not accomplishing the purpose. No. You do see a lot of evergreen trees in areas around, and I, I have not seen any fire hazard so far as far in this area. <laughs> you come over to my house and I'll show it to you. <laughs> what I'm thinking is... So I got is a bunch of them out there. To, uh, I cut them down and the wind is blowing them all over the neighbor's property. I'm out okay. there every day bringing them back home. Do you, do you, do you see <laughs> burned areas where there are evergreens? I have them. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, real quick, um, you know, item A, you know, I talked about the buffer and, you know, most of the places I've seen, they wanted to have at least trees, you know, somewhat established height-wise. Um, a landscape plan for approval, and that's how they're going to maintain it. How they're, you know, the, and so that is a common thing I've seen, so that it can it um, fits the area. Um, mm -hmm. um, topographical features, <coughs> and this just allows. If, if they're building, if it's like a big hill or they're right there, it's in the middle of a wooded area, you know, it just happens to be that open pasture that they're selling out, but it's not visible from anywhere, then that, um, they can use the topographical feature to conceal it mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. um, and that, and then the landscape plan, just number four, just talks about what they're going to do that will provide wildlife, pollinator habitat, soil erosion, strengthening the soil, you know, it's just they have to 
tell us how they're going to protect the soil and, and benefit besides. Mm -hmm. So it puts some ownership on them to be a good community steward. Okay. Okay. And the lighting, that makes good sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, noise level, um, I think I took that off the wind power. And I've seen some ordinances have that's, a... That's not our wind power. Okay. Is ours 40? Uh, uh, Marvin can tell you. Yeah, that. whatever. Um, Marvin is an expert on Yeah. On I know there is a noise level thing. Where did I? Okay, I didn't highlight the noise. Okay. It, I think it's 30, 30? 30 at night and 35 at the daytime. Is that what we've we, got? Okay, and I don't, I mean, this is if Remember, the structures are moving, that you have more noise. I mean, if it's the stationary yeah. fix, I you're not. I can't see the wind, the, the solar panel. But all the towns see. that I looked at in areas, they did have a decibel level. And it's for some of those that the, that move, you know, that follow. It's on page 19 of the Okay. Oh, uh, it says uh, from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., uh, 35 dB and uh, 10 p.m., 7 a.m., 30 dB. So just keep it 30? I think that's the yeah, for right now. Me. Okay. Yeah, I was being generous. I had 40. 40? Okay. It doesn't bother. <laughs> Tell me. I don't own it. This is, I will not take offense if you don't like stuff. I'm just trying to scratch out and give us a guide. So yeah. please. Um, Things like this take more than one meter. It takes, time. yeah. And that's why I'm letting, you know, Marvin can decide when enough is enough. Um, for right now, because I have a lot of notes that I can fix too. Yeah. So if you wanted to go through and find some of the key things that do, you think I should, do we have anything more on page four? That yeah, performance standards. It says all power plants must conform to the performance standards. What are the performance oh, standards? Where'd you see that? No, page five. He he oh, had right. a cleaned up version because I had an extra page that I didn't need it. So he's on page four, page five. I'm on page three, going to page four. Yeah. Three? Well, his copy I cleaned up. If you know some of you, um, I had an extra, somehow or another, an extra page printed that oh, was blank. Yeah. blank so yeah, I fixed much. the formatting okay. at all. So that's why. So he's on talking about number 11. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This, um, I think this one came from Edwardsville. And, and this also, they tied in with their way to get rid of the plant. Like if if the solar panels stop functioning the way they should, they have to they have they have to maintain the panels is what the they have to maintain it and it has to conform with what the performance standard is. If it stops performing then But what is the performance standard? We'll have to guide that to according to the co NEC or I'll, I'll write that in. I would assume the manufacturer of the solar panel would have standards. And maybe I don't need who, the wording. And who is the, who is the authority that decides if they're not conforming? <laughs> yeah, that's a little, that would yeah. be another question. Yeah, I'm putting that down to, to research. Okay. Okay. Well, the signage, that's pretty plain to me. Anybody else? No, that's standard. Storage, I don't know. That one, um, again, came out. One of the plants, one of the farms um, started to have junk mm -hmm. that they stored. Let me read. You know, I think I meant to put, um, what's the proper well, title? Well, Debbie Bob, it'd be the, the um, zoning. yeah, that's, that's zoning enforcement. Right. <coughs> What's the title? Zoning enforcement. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't know. No, that no. Was, that that's I, the stuff that I need. Right, but I mean, I presume that's who. It yeah, was, that's who I'm talking about. But somebody could say, well, the company putting them in has a planning director also. No, it's it's <laughs> all pointed towards who right. we. No, yeah. That's, no, that's thank you. That's what we need. Okay. Now it's in thirteen. Yeah, thir number thirteen outdoor storage. Oh, it's. No. Um, the planning director. I just have to change it to zoning enforcement or whatever. I'll put the proper title okay. for that. Um, then we're getting into the more nitty gritty, I would say. Um, permit requirements and yeah, I took the zoning board of appeals out of here because they don't have any requirements. It's the county's requirements okay. that they okay that they're with.
Okay, and it seems like, uh, Bob, maybe you could address this. 50 copies of uh, required submittals, why, why so many? That Kate Key had that on there, so I don't know. And that would be excessive. What would be the right number for you? I mean, obviously, because it's what gets mailed out and sent. It's basically they have to provide it instead of us making the copies. Are you going to give a submittal to every county board member? Just all the money gets approved there. Fifty might be appropriate because you got twenty board members. You got seven board of county board of appeals members. Um, you've got uh, state's attorney. You've got. Uh, uh, I'm sure you're going to have an engineer look at some stuff. So it maybe yeah, makes yeah. sense. Then. Yeah, yeah. It's to keep us from okay. having the expense of making all the copies. Yeah, okay, that, that does make sense. Then. I mean, you're, you're pushing 30 just, to, just with your, your county board and the zoning board of appeals. You're already at 30, so, and then that doesn't, and then you've got the zoning office. You've got uh, any, um, I'm sure some outside people will employ you, mm -hmm. the plans, some outside groups. I guess, you know, I would, wouldn't be shocked with that. Um, because you're going to have pros and cons again, you know. Mm -hmm. You have know, people saying like Dan's expressed is just, you know, because it's subsidized and they would be against it just for that reason. So I'm sure you'll get groups that will employ it. I'm sure the Farm Bureau will want a copy. So yeah, 50 might be appropriate. Yeah, makes sense then. Okay. Okay, let's move on then. What's next that anybody has questions about? I'm on page five where it says sketch under number two F sketch. I don't think we should have certified drawings on it would be page seven way. for the old yeah, version. Page seven. Page seven for if you have the old version or top, page top five page, if you have the top of page seven on the most of our yeah. Yeah. under under site plan of the proposed conditions number F it says sketch the elevation of the premises accurately. We don't really want to sketch. We want certified drawings, don't we? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so certified, is that the right term? Certified drawings? That does it mean? Of elevation. I mean, obviously, if you're requesting certified engineer spec drawings, that's what they're going to submit, and that's going to suffice a lot of different Certified engineer yeah. drawings or whatever, whatever, whatever the industry requires. I mean, the drawings would be certified. Certified drawings. Okay. Sure okay. Electrical engineers, all structural engineers. So I'm sure. Yeah, I just want to make sure I put the proper term. Okay. Thank you. The next one under weed and grass control. I struck out the word acceptable. And just uh, the applicant must present a weed control plan <coughs> for property approved by the county. That will work. And then what do you know, after weed control plan. Well, it, it, well it, I'm just it, trying it, to. It, it may be a little bit confusing. It might, but it, the point is we want to put approved by the county. The county's got to approve their weed control plan, and mainly for the fire hazard. I think as much as anything, but. And then the, the last sentence on that page, which may be different than your page, I guess it says, if the operating company does not, there can be a fine. It should be there shall be a fine. We can so always right can put shell. We can always waive it, but it's shell yeah. is better than there yep. can be. So. No, wait a minute, I'm not getting that. In the G, number on G, 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 the last sentence. Last sentence. <laughs> if the operating company does, does not, there can. Okay, can. yeah, it should be shall. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. What else is, is uh, questionable here as we go? On the next page under paragraph 7. Which would be page 8 at the time of applying. Yeah, page 8 probably for yeah. everyone else. This is uh, written next to the last part of the last sentence. is already written explanation outlining why an interconnection agreement is not necessary so it should be provided, it shall be, shall be provided. Shall be. You get strike should, put shall. Yeah, yeah that'll work. And then the next one after that, it starts into decommissioning. And I guess this is something that we may have different opinions on. That's fine, but I, I <coughs> thought that the 
event or the project isn't working after uh, or be is idle for six months, six consecutive months, that's sufficient. So yeah. strike 12 with six, you that's, think? I'm just my, asking. That's my feeling. Other people may think it should be. What are you, you talking about this day if yeah, it stops yeah, running? Right. So how yeah. long and should it sit? Right. Obviously you have to, you're, you're going to make a proposal and it's going to have to go through the, the process between Zoning Board of Appeals, um, Zoning Committee, and uh, full board. The public will have a right to mm -hmm. speak at all three in favor or against, a solo of the board. And so whatever you put in there obviously has a chance to be changed or and then, we'll have, and then we'll have a moratorium and then we'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> round and round yeah. we'll go. And, and that's my whole intent is to try to <laughs> not have to um, call in the uh, coroner to make a moratorium, yeah. a mortuary for yes. us. <laughs> then on, on Will city. there be any kind of a subsidy or a, a something saved for uh, decommissioning? We're coming back. We're, we're, we're coming back. Right yep. 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 And that's one of the things. And that decommissioning is the one area that I'm weak on. Well, I think so. decommissioning is one of the main items in our wind ordinance that is keeping the wind companies from coming in here because there's some pretty strict requirements there, but our purpose with the wind ordinance, and I think should be the same here, is mm -hmm. that we're preparing an ordinance that allows them to come in, but it also protects the property owners that don't want them. It protects the county, <coughs> which is our job. Mm -hmm. So an irre irrevocable letter of credit I don't think is acceptable. Yeah, so page 8, if you're on mine, um, what item? Paragraph C. 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 So, the, the last plan. sentence. Yeah, I'm just take, take your irrevocable Irre letter of credit out completely. Cash place in the county escrow account. The wind ordinance states something like escrow account's going to be in a financial institution acceptable to the county, something like that. So if you find those words, that, could, that probably would be a good way to put it. So um, let me restate that again. In the wind ordinance, it says that the cash is placed in an escrow account uh, account. Jo jo I, don't know, I don't remember the exact word. I'll, I'll it. look it up yeah, uh, when ordinance. Yeah, that's, now, is chosen, there... It's a bank chosen by the county yeah. uh, or acceptable to the county, something of that sort. Yeah. Um, In other words, we, it, we choose where the escrow is going to be, they don't. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the security finance, do I need to put in a dollar amount or put in the county board shall decide what that no, is? That, we're going to have to put that in there. That's not in there anyway no. right now. But we're going to have to, and I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. Well, we, we tried to base <laughs> some of it on the wind ordinance is what we thought it might cost to for decommissioning. And that's a guess. But, uh, you know, I think. I would, I would assume decommissioning a wind farm, tower farm would be a lot more expensive than a right. solar farm because yeah. you're more confined on a solar mm -hmm. farm. Right. But I know what I am. <laughs> no, well, just just the, just the cost of the cranes to come in and do it is, is a, one of the yeah. major items yeah. of expense, and you wouldn't have that. But you got to think too. It's like a high hole now. Maybe might be a hundred dollars an hour. Twenty years from now, it might be five thousand dollars an hour. Right. Well, and yeah. that's, so how do you project? Do we? Well, you do that. You do that by. It says those right those here that the decommissioning is updated every right. three years. Yeah, so item E. That should be yeah. shall should be. Yeah, and I think that answers his. Does anyone have an idea what the life expectancy of one of these facilities might be? Depends on who's saying it. Pardon? It depends on who's saying it. You might say six months. I might say. <laughs> I, what I have seen, and I have looked on the people that really love them and people that don't hate them, the, the, the haters make it sound like they'll fall apart in eight, eight to ten years. The, the ones that are in love with it make it sound like they last 30. Um, what, but the, what I have noticed is the like prairie power uh, for, the one, for the two utility scale farms, they say it will be about a 20 year to 25 year life expectancy. Now we're in a climate that has a lot of hail. Do these withstand hail damage or hail when it's hailing? Is that even our, it, I don't... Yeah, uh, that's not our response. Can anybody... It depends on how severe the hail storm is. Yeah, probably. yeah. That Anything subject to damage, I mean, obviously, you know, if you've driven around and like so I have hell. in various counties a lot, You'll see, you'll see a 
and just in the wind turbines, you'll see one with a flapped over wing, yeah. this, and they'll, you'll see one that's got a burned out generator, and I mean, it's just sub everything subject to, and they said the one in Livingston County was hit by lightning, and that's what caused the fire. And the other, they had another one, I think, got burned, but it was an internal. It was an internal problem. So, but they're required to repair. I mean, obviously, and that you know, obviously, if they want to be stay viable, they repair their equipment, they repair their stuff at their expense, and then they're required by all ordinance to notify us that those have been repaired with new. If they've been repaired with a new generator, then that actually basically starts that over as a brand new facility and the assessment is adjusted back to brand new. Mm -hmm. So we have, we're have we supposed to get a maintenance report every year, um, and we do, from the companies, and uh, stating that, uh, you know, what we've, what we've, what their, their maintenance report basically says what they've done over the last year. And if they'll have, if they've replaced the generator, they'll tell you. And um, I'm not sure about, um, about Pilot Hill outfit, but Eon was very good at their maintenance. They were very thorough and you know told us exactly what they did, mm -hmm. when they did it, and why they did it. And mm -hmm. so, but that I, the wind solar farm. I mean, obviously, if a panel gets damaged by hail, I would assume they would come in and put a new panel in. I mean, that would make sense. Well, <laughs> the reason I bring that subject up is about five years ago, I I live at Lake Erkoy, and there was almost every home out there had to have their roofs replaced because of the hailstorm we had out there. And some over Bales Lake did too. But it wasn't as bad over there as it was over at our place. And there's 300 homes out there. And almost every one of them in the avenue. Well, it would come back to if it stops functioning, then it has to be removed or... That's why we're giving them six months. That yeah. ought to be sufficient to... Because the panel make the, the whole solar farm inoperable? I don't know. I'm not an expert well, in but, solar industry. But also, I mean, and, and we probably should incorporate this in there somewhere that, you know, that the county has the right to waive that requirement if there's extenuating circumstances for some reason or other. And I think that's in our wind ordinance. In fact, really, mm -hmm. we're about, we've about gone through this thing now, but I really think that's probably the next step is to go through the wind ordinance carefully and see what things are in there that need to be incorporated into here. Because, like, you know, like we said, there's a number of things in here, like insurance and so forth. That even that, there's even things in our wind ordinance, like you have in here, about that they have to put up a sign. Our wind ordinance specifies the size of the sign mm -hmm. and and the lettering and so forth. And I think that's good. To mm -hmm. incorporate what that protection way. we have if they go bankrupt in 15 years? Good question. Well, that's the, that's, that, the, that's, that's the decommissioning. That's the decommissioning yeah. and security financing and like what so is the right amount. So then the county's got to go out and hire somebody to clean that up. Right. Yep. And that's where the decommissioning money is supposed to be. The initial decommissioning money, which isn't in here, that we'll have to figure out, should cover the fact that if six months after they start, we, we've we got enough money to tear If they walk away, we got enough money to do that. And then it gets updated every three years as, you know, as those costs increase. But we should always have yeah. the money on hand. CYA. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to do in, in here. But now, this is the part I really need to look at. It's just a, a thought. I mean, obviously, if you put a flat figure in there, wouldn't you base it based on the size of the potential of the proposed solar farm? Because a 40 acre solar farm would be less cost to decommission a hundred acre solar farm. You probably have to do it based on the number of individual panels. That, are that makes sense. Yeah. Because, I mean, obviously... I mean, that's the same way with the wind farm, is it not? That this, how many turbines you have out of yeah. the size of the decommission. But, you know, you, know, you, you know, specifically how many turbines, and then you put a cost on each based on, a decommission cost based on each. But, Obviously, a solar farm, your acreage is can vary as much as, depending on what you put in. Mm -hmm. 20 acres to Winnebago County, you've got a 750-acre proposed solar farm. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, and Winnebago has a has an ordinance that I've looked at and pulled some of their stuff out. I mean, from so that cost to decommission that 750-acre one would be a lot more money than the mm -hmm. one for the 40-acre. 
And, and I think we're at the point where doing all this research is helpful because like anybody that already has an ordinance doesn't mean it's perfect. They're all subject to revision. Experience is going to dictate mm -hmm. that. Like I said, our wind power ordinance was changed three or four times. Yeah. And you still, you know, I'm sure there are people that still want to make changes to it. Well, and some of the changes also too have to do with, with in the case of the wind power ordinance, the size of the turbine. Right. And those that has a big impact on it. But in the case of these, you know, like when, when Dan is asking about how long are they going to last, there's been a lot of technological improvements in these collectors over the last few years. And, and if you look and, and think that may continue, then if you've got a solar farm, some guy may want to tear it out and well, whatever he has to do is you know, take advantage okay. of these improvements. So it's hard to say how long they're going to last. They they sign a contract with farmers, right? Landowners. Get, yeah, landowners. Mm -hmm. The lease, lease. Probably would be my guess. Some mm -hmm. kind of a lease. Because obviously the landowner's not going to give up title to the land. No. Kind of like the cell no, phone No, but if the landowner comes up five years from now and says, I want you off my property. I'm sure there's provisions in the lease. Yeah. That, that's, that's why the Farm Bureau is having the meeting on July 10th yeah. to help because landowners just, just understand the, you know, the impacts. What happened up in... No, the bro, the thing about the farm bureau, you got to be very careful. Oh, very careful. Um, that they've been involved they, for a while. I can lease. tell you the arguments I've had with them, hours on hours. Some on end, farmers thought, thought they were signing a lease about, just well, to yeah. where the site should be there and the the county. So no, they we don't want that. We want them in there. The wind, yeah. The same thing like we have here. No, I expect that. A lease on their entire. I just know they are. So they could basically put anything they wanted anywhere within the rules of the. I don't remember the guy's name anymore. But that's why you see those the guy I've been talking to is Dave 40, uh, 50 foot off Someone's the road driving on Interstate 57 well anyway item E I put three years a lot of the counties have five years as far as the decommissioning plan three, I, I think, think three is good so double check that um, the last page fees this is something that I'll you know, as all well for you, it probably be the page before that. Uh, I guess the cost yeah. should be five thousand. Did you get? Yeah, I, um, I copy. Let's see. I think it might have been Winnebago that has has this wording. Um, that the initial fee is five thousand dollars, and then they have to show that um, that they can pay additional fees. Basically, to say we're not paying for any uh, of the costs. The wind ordinance has the same, same thing. And maybe I copied it from them. I don't know. Double check the amount. Did I will. The other 5, thing. 5,000 fee cover a five acre plot versus a 75 acre plot? No, that's yeah, just. Yeah. Or, that's just their initial filing fee. No matter how big. Uh, no matter how big. Yeah. That, that puts the wheels in motion to cover our costs in processing that application. If that application is approved, and they're ready to go, then they have to pay building permit fees. Mm -hmm. We don't have that in there right now. No. And that needs to be put in there so what the permit fee will be. And probably that permit fee will, kind of like with decommissioning, will be based on the number of units that you're putting in. Yeah. And if we wanted something different, you know, for the utility scale, those small ones, that's a different thing. This is the solar farms, the, right. the 28, you know, the, yeah, the I, acres. I, and I think we should have a separate ordinance yeah. to, to cover that. Just so there's no Because I think you'll see the utility scale a little more common, especially with the co-ops, because yeah. the co-ops are pushing it. So, yeah, um, it's, just, it's just to avoid confusion that we can distinguish between one and the other. Uh, just as a admin FYI, on the front, front page, um, I have working draft. I I will when I do the update, I'll put revision two on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that we know what copy we're working from. Right. And um, okay. And then it, feel free, you know, email, you know, wording or whatever. But thank you for for looking through this and helping guide me to write what you guys want to write. Well, I think that covers that for now. We need to review the yes. claims. Thank you, John. I gotta go. Yeah. No, thanks for sitting and showing me your stuff. One o'clock appointment. I gotta go. Okay. Tell them hi. Review claims. Yeah. <laughs> we still have a uh, quorum, I assume. Ernie. I think he's coming back. Is yeah. he?
Okay, because he took he a paper. That. I don't know whose stuff that is. No, that's, that, that's Bob. Bob's. This oh, is Bob's. Ernie took his stuff. So Ernie's and gone. And Ernie left. Okay, how many's on our... We have our quorum. We have five, so... No, we've got a quorum. Yeah. We've got a quorum. Yeah, we have a quorum with us three, so... So, okay. Any, any questions on the claims? No, I did not when I looked at them. So, is there a motion to approve the claims? I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Second. Any further discussion? If not, uh, roll call. McGinnis? Yes. Persley? Yes. Thicknot? Yes. Okay. In the old business? No, we did it. <laughs> We're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Any new business? Motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 aye.